Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, let's take our seats. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinguished honor to join you today to observe the 11th anniversary of the KDF Day. This is a day dedicated to the remembrance of those of our gallant soldiers who have paid the ultimate price in the defense of our Republic, Kenya. We pay homage to the bravery of our warriors in defending and protecting our sovereignty, territorial integrity in diverse engagements. As Commander-in-Chief, I note with approval that the theme of this year's KDF Day is, and I quote, soldier-centric approaches towards the upscaling of mission readiness. End of quote. Indeed, this underpin underpins the sense of duty that the troops continue to exemplify. Our freedom and sovereignty are hard-worn products of great sacrifice that we must always guard with utmost vigilance in honor of those who sacrifice for it and in order for us to achieve sustainable development. Our territorial integrity relies on our defense forces and its members must therefore always be prepared for every exigency with the requisite tools, capabilities, and motivation. The tip of the nation's spear has always been and will always remain our troops, be they on land, in air, or at sea. The government commits and the government commitments in this regard will remain paramount and we will continue to invest in our men and women in uniform through the provision of training and education complemented by the acquisition of relevant weapon systems, equipment, and guaranteeing access to medical care that is holistic, that is reliable and effective. The KDF must remain thoroughly professional in order to secure the nation against all threats by offering credible de deterrence and also stay robust enough to engage any threat to Kenya's national security and interests. Having been recently briefed on aspects of research and development undertaken by the KDF, some of which were showcased at the just concluded Nairobi International Trade Fair, I look forward to seeing more innovations from the military family. It is desirable that the solutions out of your laboratories and workshops are not exclusively focused on defense and security. I urge you to also seek to address human security needs of the citizenry, like food security and affordable housing. Indeed, the broader national purposes of our public service, in so far as they apply to defense forces, should find robust expression in the work that our gallant men and women in uniform undertake. I am delighted to observe that you have seized the opportunity of engaging with the citizenry as a platform to articulate our collective aspirations and give the best expression to our national values and principles of governance. Sustainable development being our ultimate principle of governance, it is encouraging that you continue to explore ways of lending a hand to the greater national effort. Significantly, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya needs to take steps towards self-sufficiency in simple defense articles, apparels, and food. 
In fact, appropriate degree of military industrialization has spurred the growth of the civilian industry in other jurisdictions. Kenya thus needs to follow international best practice to achieve this desired self-sufficiency. I note also the secondary role the KDF has undertaken in support of other state agencies in disaster response, human, uh, humanitarian support, and inter-community peace building. This is yet another chance for our forces to practice its magnificent tradition of articulating our values. Our soldiers embody national security and inspire confidence. Your participation at the core of efforts to solve human problems and respond to citizen needs entrench your capacity to touch hearts and to encourage people. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya is committed to international as well as regional peace and security as it is the only guarantor of amicable co coexistence and regional economic growth. Our forces continue to be called upon by the Africa Union and United Nations to augment peace support operations in Africa and beyond. And I have had a conversation with the leadership of our KDF to expand our efforts in peace keeping across the globe. Some of the sacrifices of our soldiers, therefore, are not confined to our immediate borders. The legacy of Kenyan peacekeepers has been appreciated as far away as West Africa. We are proud of your achievements as Kenya's unique ambassadors and proud champions of the Kenyan winning way. As a responsible member of the global community, our stand on the war on terror speaks for itself. For this reason, KDF is in Somalia, having been invited among other nations to support the United Nations and the Africa Union Transition Mission in Somalia, formerly AMISOM. This, contribu this contribution supports the efforts of the international community in pursuing peace in the Horn of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, the welfare of soldiers and their families is a priority. I therefore appreciate the establishment of the various KDF regional hospitals in order to bring closer the requisite preventive and curative health to families and veterans. This initiative saves costly and lengthy trips to Nairobi for treatment. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I take this opportunity to rally our distinguished citizens to maintain the noble tradition of honoring the service of all our men and women in uniform and in appreciating the heroic sacrifices they are called upon to make for us to live in peace and in freedom. We must renew our commitment to do our part in doing all we can and do it right. Let selfless service define the work we all do for our country, regardless of whether we are soldiers or otherwise engaged. In any case, Kenya is the collective project of 50 million Kenyans, citizens doing their bit, our men in, unis, in uniform doing their part, and the people in the executive, in the legislature, and in the judiciary playing their role. We must perceive our daily duties, whatever form they take, as contributing to the broader collective endeavor in pursuit of, a, of sustainable development and apply ourselves accordingly. Every day in Kenya, we should be 
Every day in Kenya should be a day of work and service, and every moment a celebration of patriotism. I further commend the spouses of our service members to remain, who remain at home, holding forth as their loved ones are away on deployment. Their work is silent, away from sight, with absolute loyalty and dedication to keep families together, thereby sustaining an indispensable support network to our officers. It is this affirming and nurturing network of loved ones which again become primary caregivers to those of our personnel who may, unfortunately, suffer critical war trauma, whether physiological or psychological, and their support is vital for healing and strength. We do not take this outstanding form of selfless national service for granted. And on behalf of a grateful nation, I appreciate you and I thank you. Let us therefore proceed on the understanding that we are united in service to uphold, protect, and defend our nation and its values and to support one another along the way because we are enlisted in one cause, the cause of one nation and one people. Finally, I am grateful to the Almighty God for this day, and I wish you his blessings as you travel back to your respective homes. May God always bless our defense forces, and may God bless our beloved nation, Kenya. Mwishimi wa rais, hivi sasa